Welcome back to Madman Review. So, last October 7th, there was a wild situation where Hamas, that terrorist group from Palestine, made their way into Israel with a bunch of gunmen. It caused a lot of chaos, killing unarmed civilians, including infants, and taking some hostages. Videos that came out afterward showed the tragedy and, weirdly, some celebrations happening in Gaza. Some eagle-eyed experts noticed that some of the weapons looked suspiciously like they were from the U.S. Fast forward and now Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene's saying those weapons might have come to Hamas via Afghanistan and Ukraine. To add to the mix, the U.S. Department of Defense did put out a report earlier mentioning they're trying to keep a tight lid on U.S. weapons going to Ukraine. There were whispers of some weapons getting swiped by traffickers over there. Iran's saying they had nothing to do with the attack on Israel. But Israel's rep at the UN dropped a video that's kind of saying the opposite. Here's a zinger. Iran's been known to support Hamas against Israel for ages. The US State Department even says... Iran's been funneling over $100 million a year to Hamas. Crazy stuff, right? Back in 2005, when Israel left Gaza, Hamas saw a golden opportunity. They started digging tunnels beneath the Egypt-Gaza border and got secret weapon deliveries from Iran and Syria. But tunnels weren't their only shopping avenue. Off Gaza's coast, there's this major smuggling scene. Pretty much a uh, black market Amazon for weapons. Plus, Sudan's been slipping Hamas some weapons on the side. Now, about Ukraine. They've been in the shady arms dealing game for a while. After Russia's drama there, a bunch of American weapons poured in. And some seem to have gone MIA. Connect the dots and it's no surprise seeing Hamas flaunting American-style weapons in their Israel showdown. War is a big business, and guess who's the top dog? The U.S. Our arms exports went up 14% between 2013 to 2017 and 2018 to 2022. They even cornered 40% of global arms exports during 2018 to 2022, as per a 2023 report. Wild times. The U.S. has a history of sending weapons to places with conflicts. Case in point, after 9-11, the U.S. sent a ton of weapons to Afghanistan. That place has been a headache for anyone trying to control it. Just like when the Soviets had to go in 88. Fast forward to 2020, Trump inked a peace deal with the Taliban, saying U.S. troops would be out by May 2021. Brandon shifted that to August 31st, but when the exit came, it was a mess. The result? The U.S. accidentally left a treasure trove of weaponry, worth over $7 billion for the taking. The Taliban swooped in and grabbed it all. We're talking a huge haul. Blackhawks, Humvees, drones, rifles, the whole shebang. Now, the real worry is where these weapons end up. They're popping up in places like Israel and even countries like India. India has been finding weapons, bullets, and high-tech gear from the botched Afghanistan with roll in Kashmir. These weapons and gear, left behind by US and NATO troops, are now in the hands of bad guys. And these bad guys seem to be using them to target Israel and again, India. With reports of U.S.-made bullets breaking through Indian soldiers' bulletproof gear. It's all a big, messy cycle, thanks to Brandon. In 2020, U.S.-made M-series rifles started popping up in Kashmir, and this had India on high alert. Pakistan's been seen with M4 carbines. The same stuff our military uses. Plus, places like Dara Adam Kell near Peshawar have become shopping centers for weapons. The Pakistani Taliban, they've also snagged some U.S. military gear. While they deny it, there's talk that these weapons are being sold in the shadows. 
There was this NBC News reporter who said most of the stuff found in Kashmir is linked to jaish e mohammed and lakshar e taiba There's buzz about whether Hamas was brandishing American guns when they hit Israel. Videos out of the Gaza Strip have got folks pointing out guns that look like American-made gear. Here's a list of all of the weapons Hamas used when they attacked Israel last October 7th. Iranian FAR-3 The FAR-3, sometimes called Fajr-3, is an Iranian 240mm artillery rocket, kind of like a beefed-up firework, but way more intense. It's a tweaked version of a North Korean rocket, the M1985. They started making the FAR-3 in the 90s, and it ended up with groups like Hamas and Hezbollah. This bad boy can shoot rockets about 27 miles, and each one is pretty heavy, packing a big punch. FAR means dawn in Arabic, by the way. Back in the day, during the Iran-Iraq war, Iran got a bunch of these from North Korea. Some folks even say the FAR-3 is kind of like the old Soviet Katyushas. In 2009, Israel tried to stop some of these rockets from getting to Hamas in Gaza via Sudan. Iranian FAR-5 The FAR-5, sometimes called Fajr-5, is a 333mm artillery rocket that Iran came up with. Think of it as a giant firework with a serious attitude. It was born in the 90s, and since then, it's made its way to various groups in the Middle East. This rocket launcher pops off four of these huge rockets that can travel about 50 miles. Each one weighs almost as much as a small car, and packs a big explosion. While most of these rockets are old school and unguided, in 2017, they introduced the FAR 5C, which comes with GPS guidance. The Iranian army mainly uses the FAR-5 to go after big, important targets like military bases. But they also gave some to Hamas to target Israel. Iranian Fateh 110 The Fateh 110, or Conqueror in Persian, is like Iran's pride and joy when it comes to missiles. Made by Iran's aerospace crew since... 2002, it's a solid-fueled missile that can be moved around on roads. It's got one stage and can carry a big boom, like up to 500 kilograms worth. Over time, they've tweaked it. Now it can go up to 300 kilometers with really accurate aim. By the end of 2014, sources from Iran and Lebanon let slip that Hezbollah got some of these Iranian Fatih-110 missiles. With a range between 250 to 350 kilometers, they can fire them from Lebanon and hit almost anywhere in Israel. Mubar-1 Anti-Aircraft Rocket Hamas has rolled out a new weapon in their arsenal called the Mubar-1 Rocket System. They say it's a short-range air defense system aimed at tackling low-altitude targets. They've even dropped a video showcasing it in action where it's seen taking down Israeli drones. There are claims that they've managed to shoot down four Israeli AH-64 Apache helicopters with this new system. Hamas's rocket attacks have been a major pain point in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. These rockets have targeted Israeli cities and civilians, causing both casualties and property damage. Israel has counteracted by targeting Hamas's launch sites and weapons storage, but with the Mubar-1 now in play, it indicates that Hamas is stepping up their game in the conflict. Kaibar 1M302 The Kaibar 1 or M302 is a Syrian 302mm artillery rocket. It made headlines when Hezbollah targeted northern Israel with it during the 2006 Lebanon War. It has been involved in the Syrian Civil War. Derived from the Chinese WS-1, it's notable for its 100km range, outpacing many other rockets like the BM-21 Grad. It boasts a distinct Syrian launcher and might pack a cluster munition or fragmentation warhead. While some confuse it with Iranian rockets like the FAR-3 or FAR-5, it is pure Syrian design. Hamas developed its own version, called the R-160. 
modified Chinese Type 77 machine gun. Have you seen that pic of Hamas's beefed up machine gun that's making the rounds on Reddit? It's chambered in 12.7 by 108 and seems to be a spin on the Chinese Type 77. Now, the original Type 77 had a nasty habit of overheating, and it's very easy to make copies of it too. This version Hamas is flaunting looks like an improved version of the Type 77. They've pretty much taken the original and slapped on a water cooling jacket, which is a straightforward fix for the overheating issue. It's easy to produce and restock. Kalashnikov Rifles On October 16th, Putin gave Netanyahu a call, saying he's aiming to chill the scene in Gaza. But come on, we all know this Russian mobster's been known to stretch the truth. He didn't bat an eye about Hamas's action towards Israel. It's pretty clear Moscow's got a soft spot for Hamas and their main squeeze, Iran. And it's all to ruffle Brandon's feathers. The day after the attack, on October 8th, Hamas's big shot, Ali Baraka, spilled the beans they've got Russian green lights to crap those Kalashnikovs they were flaunting. And if that doesn't raise your eyebrows, just wait for the next weapon reveal. Soviet DSHK The Soviet DSHK is a belt-fed heavy machine gun with a unique V-shaped butterfly trigger. It spits out 12.7 by 108 millimeter cartridges and can unleash a whopping 600 rounds every minute. With a solid range of about 1.5 miles, this bad boy can pierce through armor as thick as 20 millimeter from half a mile away. And for targeting aircraft, it's got two cool spiderweb ring sights. While infantry lug it around on tripods, it can also be found mounted on tanks and armored rides, gunning for both ground troops and aircraft. Almost every tank designed by the Russians rocks a DSHK. And alongside our very own M2 Browning, it's the only 50 caliber machine gun from before World War II, still seeing action today. The connection between Putin and the supply of weapons to Hamas isn't clear. However, it's evident that Russia plays a role in the dynamics of this Hamas-Israel war. What's not evident is America's role. M16 After the US's abrupt exit from Afghanistan in 2021, some unexpected ripples occurred. Notably, Palestinians have been wielding M16s. These are the same rifles the U.S. troops left behind in their rush. Somehow, these guns made their journey from Afghanistan's rugged terrain right to Gaza streets. While there isn't a direct link from Afghanistan to Palestine, the global arms black market always finds a way. It's a glaring example of how one geopolitical decision can have unexpected, widespread repercussions. The aftermath of the Afghanistan pullout keeps surprising us, reminding us that in the global chessboard, one move can trigger unforeseen chain reactions. M4 Hamas terrorists are also flexing with M4 carbines. Yep, those left behind by Uncle Sam. Photos of them wielding them are making the rounds online, especially after the day they attacked Israel. How did these rifles travel from Afghan dust to Gaza streets? I don't know, but the world's black market is like a 24-7 yard sale, and Putin is claiming some of these were also purchased from Muslim mercenaries hired by Ukraine. Goes to show that when big moves happen halfway around the globe, ripples can turn into waves somewhere else. M240 Heard about those M240 machine guns after the 2021 pullout from Afghanistan? Guess who snagged them? That's right, Hamas. It's like ditching your old bike and then seeing it in a totally unexpected place. The journey these M240s took is wild. But given Brandon's stupid decision-making when he pulled our troops out of Afghanistan, it's not surprising. Makes you think, though. What other U.S. weapons might Hamas have gotten a hold of? M2 Browning After that botched U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021, 
Afghans got their hands on some really nice M2 Brownings. And two years later, Hamas terrorists have them too. These 50 BMG heavy hitters the US left behind are now in a totally different neighborhood. It's like you're watching stuff from one garage sale end up in another. Wild how Joe Biden's oopsie can be Hamas's jackpot. It's sad that during this incontinent in chief's tenure, two significant wars erupted. And that wraps up this video. Think there were other Hamas weapons we might have missed? Sound off in the comments. Please like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell icon too for more of these videos. Thanks for watching.